the Paracave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Paramount Leash Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BTZD Clothing, and the official media partner of the Paracave Podcast, the Parramatta Times. G'day, it's Gus Warland here from Gotcha for Life and Triple M. I'd love to invite you along to the Mental Fitness Gym. Go to the mentalfitnessgym.org. That is a place where you can pick up some exercises to build your mental fitness, to work on that emotional muscle, those muscles in your head that are so powerful. Please come and join us at the mentalfitnessgym.org for all that stuff to build your emotional muscle and your mental fitness. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world famous Paracave. And yes, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. Troy Warner here, and this is the game day review podcast of the Dragons vs. the Eels that was played at Combank Stadium on Saturday, just gone, the 31st of August at 3pm. So a nice sunny afternoon it was at Combank Stadium. There was three games on there, the New South Wales Cup and the NRLW as well between the same sides. The Dragons, they got it to a flyer of a start in those two games. They got the victories in both the NRLW and the New South Wales Cup, uh, but couldn't get the job done in the first grade which was a crucial loss for them in their charge for the finals uh they were sitting in eighth spot at the time and now it unfortunately looks like they won't make the semi-finals um a very disappointing loss for the dragons fans out there no doubt but a little bit of a happy feeling for the Parramatta eels fans Although they do go into the game this weekend, the big spoon bowl game out there at Campbelltown between the Eels and the Tigers. So, uh, look, at the moment, the Eels sit in 16th spot, so, uh, and the Tigers are in 17th on the same number of points, obviously. So, the winner of that game will avoid the wooden spoon. Now, this game was won by the Eels. 44 points to 40. It was nine tries to seven. Uh, conversions from Parramatta probably let them down a little bit. Uh, there were some hard shots there. Uh, Dijan Arce, four from nine. Zach Lomax, who will be coming to the Parramatta Eels next season. Six out of seven, so not too bad from Zach there. Uh, in the try scoring department, a uh, Double to Clint Gutherson and a triple to Mike Acevo that stand out for the Dragons. Matt Fine, uh, he got a triple and Tyrell Sloan, he got a double as well in the Dragons 40 points. Now the Dragons 40 points is the biggest score a team has put on the board and lost a game of rugby league. Unbelievable, isn't it? That you could score 40 points in a game of rugby league and lose. So for the first time in history, that has happened. And also, speaking about history, Mike Acevo, with his three tries that he scored on the weekend, he come, his total goes to 102 tries, and he becomes the fastest the quickest player to score 100 tries in the NRL. Only debuted in 2019, so six seasons of NRL. He sits on the fi- he sits fifth on the all-time list for Eels try scorers, um, and so he's played 124 games. So congratulations, Micah, on achieving the ton in scoring tries. There's been a few fantastic tries that I can remember. Um, there was, I think, what, well, there's a one against the Warriors there in 2019. Obviously, the James Tedesco one where 
He basically bulldozed him. And now, I must admit, a lot of Micah's tries have been from close range, uh, including uh, probably, I think it was three on the weekend that were pretty close range. Um, But you still have to score them. Uh, His first try, he still had to do a little bit of work to get across the line there. The other two, it was just brilliant work from the inside players and passes that got him across the line virtually untouched. So uh, it's been great tries over his career. What has been your favourite Mike Acevo try from over the years? Uh, There certainly has been a few and this year he has scored a double on two occasions, the game against the Dragons that have just gone that I'm talking about now, and also against Manly at Four Points Park. He scored a triple on that night, has scored four tries on two occasions. Uh, that was one against Penrith in 2023. I think that was the around 26 game that the Panthers lost to the Eels on that occasion. It was a big win um, in a bit of a lull of a season for the Eels and in 2020 against North Queensland at Bankwest Stadium, as it was called at the time, he scored four tries on that occasion. But um, I think a couple of my favourite tries were those tries that he scored against Penrith at Penrith in round 26 there. Um, there were some good efforts there, but as I said, that James Tedesco one, that really just stands out, poor James. And the commentary from Andrew Voss, um, I think he said something like, somebody call a priest, somebody call an ambulance. Um, Mike Acevo has just trampled over James Tedesco. Um, so congratulations to Micah on reaching that milestone. Now, look, before we get into the game... Uh, Look, no, we'll get into the game now. It was a very fast start for Parramatta. Uh, It was 26-6 at halftime. Will Penasini scored the first try after three minutes. He scored the first try last week as well against the Broncos. Um, And Micah scored the next one for Parramatta. Uh, And then for the Dragons, they got over in the 14th minute. But Clint Gutherson and Jake Tungo and Sean Lane and Dylan... uh, Sean Lane scored in the first half. So, look, it was um, that Jake Tungo try was a great pass, great try assist from Dylan Brown, sort of a, what do they call it these days, the Harbour Bridge sort of pass out there. And one of the things that I cannot believe these days is the fact that these wingers can catch the ball and have such little space but still manage to score. And we see it every each and every week from each and every team, each and every winger, the tries that they are able to score in corners uh, by just jumping for the line a, few, a, a metre or two out and just getting that ball across the try line. I think um, Kyle Felt up at the North Queensland Cowboys, he's well known for it. Uh, Ronaldo Mulatalo, he's known for it as well. And we saw on the weekend with Jake Tungo um, getting across that line. Um, as, as I said, I've watched the replay a couple of times and just he caught the ball and didn't have that much space to run in, in and managed to stay in and jump for the line and get it in. So well done, Jake. Sean Lane, his try was pretty much, he ran over the top of Ben Hunt. Ben Hunt, it looked like he was trying to make a strip on the ball, I think, um, from memory, looking at the replay, and obviously he obviously didn't get that, and Sean broke the line and went over to score from about 25 metres out, so um, yeah, a good try there to Sean Lane. Uh, Look, for the Dragons, the thing that I can't believe is the fact that, or from a Parramatta fan anyway, uh, with 10 and a half minutes to go, it was 44 points to 12 in favour of the Eels. And at full time, it ended up being 44 points to 40. Now, I must admit, a lot of those tries from the Dragons did end up being off kicks. Uh, There was a... A bit of a chip kick from Ben Hunt for Tyrell Sloan to score a great try. Um, that was a great try, that one. Uh, certainly showed his speed there. And there was a crossfield kick from Raymond Fatala Mariner. Um, 
and I think there's, there was one dubious one that I thought was probably maybe going to be called back forward a pass from Michaeli Ravalawa back inside, but uh, it was let to go play on, and Matt Fine scored the try there. So, look, those late tries, they happened in the 69th, 72nd, 76th, 77th, 79th minute. The last try of the day, actually, the, the Dragons, they had to decline the kick at goal because otherwise that would have taken a time. And basically, they received the ball from the kickoff, which was very smartly kicked as deep as possible. I think they caught it on the, in the in goal. Uh, there was, I think, one pass, I think it was to Ben Hunt, who tried a little kick through the line, but it didn't come to fruition. And Luca Moretti jumped on the ball, and Parramatta had won the game. So, look, there's a bit of a frantic end to the game there, but um, the concerning thing, I think, you would think, for Parramatta, well, probably not at this time of year anyway because Parramatta can't make the finals. But uh, And so it wouldn't have worried about for and against, to be honest. Um, they just needed to win the game um, just for a bit of self-pride at the end of the game in front of their members. 21,500, I think, was at the game on Saturday, which was great to see. Uh, nice sunny conditions, and it was good to see a game at Combank Stadium during the day. And 21,500, I think it was, that turned up there. So, a pretty good attendance there. So, the boys wanted to get a win in front of their home fans and members, um, and obviously look forward to this game against the Tigers next week. But try and go out in the season with uh, some wins that obviously haven't come throughout the year. No fault through trying, but it just sort of reminded me again of probably the tale of Parramatta's season. They have got to big leads, and then in the second half, they have unfortunately let those leads slip and lose the game. We saw it against Brisbane last week, 16-0 in front got run down we saw it in the Dolphins game in Northern Territory where the Dolphins just came out in that second half and uh, blitzed it Um, and the Panthers game a few weeks ago now it was at about six and a half minutes to go and the Panthers ended up getting the win there so there's probably other ones in there that I've forgotten about to be honest uh, which have been the tail of the season for Parramatta but they held on for the win, 44 points to 40, which was pretty good to get a win. Uh, it's always good to get a win. Uh, it's always a good feeling over the weekend to get a win, despite the positions on the ladder. Now, as I said, the Eels are in 16th spot at the moment on 18 points. The Dragons, however, with results that have gone uh, with the games that have happened over the weekend, the Dolphins beating the Broncos, so they jumped to 28 points there, for and against is plus 7. The Knights also had a win over the Titans there, for and against is minus 48. The Dragons, uh, the Dragons, they unfortunately lost. They stay on 28 points, but they slipped down to 10th position there, for and against is minus 124. And the Raiders, they had a win over the Roosters, a very courageous win, to be honest. Um, against the Ra- against the Roosters, 14 points to 12, and their four and against is minus 129. So, look, it's a it's going to be. The, I think the the Dolphins play the Knights. I think it is next week. So that will be a uh, the winner of that game will definitely go into finals and. I just can't, and the, and the Dragons play the Raiders at Cogra Oval. So uh, the winner of that game will go on to 30 points, but I think it's just a for and against and just won't get either the Dragons or Raiders into the finals unless they have a massive win, um, and I'm talking massive. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't think they will make the finals, unfortunately. It's been a good season for the Dragons. A lot of up and downs. A lot of people 
tip them to be down the bottom of the ladder, probably where Parramatta and the Tigers are at the moment. Uh, but Coach Shane Flanagan has done a great job to get them where they are. They had that win-loss, win-loss streak. Uh, it was to be the win win part of that streak last weekend, uh, but it wasn't to be. But still, he's done a great job to get them into 10th position. He was very disappointed after the game. I was able to catch up with him after the game on the way out of Combank Stadium. And he was very upset and disappointed and frustrated at the performance of the Dragons. They just made too many errors too early and too much of a slow start and just couldn't get back into the game and beat the Eels. So he was very disappointed. But he had done a great job at the Dragons this year. He's getting a couple of players there next year to the Dragons. Uh, Val Holmes from the Cowboys. And there is also talk that RCG from Parramatta might end up there as well next year. So just watch this space. So he could be one player that could be on the way of the Dragons. So he's getting a couple of players there to the Dragons. So um, we're in a bit of a rebuilding phase. So uh, especially this year. But next year they could be challenging for the top eight as well. It's always interesting to see who outside the eight doesn't make, uh, will make the eight next year and who in the eight this year will, will drop out. So obviously the likes of Parramatta, the Warriors, the Broncos, they will want to try and get back in that top eight and the Dragons, they'll probably want to try and crack into that top eight as well. Look, to some of the stats of the game, uh, when it comes to... Tackles, Brennan Hands, 40, RCG, 33, Sean Lane, 27, and Joe Offahengawi, 23 tackles. Now, I think Joe is probably, Joe Offahengawi has probably been one of Parramatta's best over the last couple of weeks. He has certainly stepped it up I, with Junior Paolo out, and he I think he's been having some of his best games for Parramatta of late um so well done to joe run meters 204 for gutho from 21 runs played 70 minutes and uh that was interesting him coming off at the 70th minute mark and dylan brown going to fullback uh there's been a little bit of talk yeah from fans about dylan brown going to fullback uh but uh, just a bit of a rest for Gutho, I guess, to get ready for Spoon Bowl. Um, but uh, 70 minutes, 21 runs, 204 metres. He was also backing up a couple of times there. One to Dylan Brown and one to Mike Acevo and got two tries in the game as well. Uh, Dylan Brown, that man I just spoke, spoke about, 19 runs, 176 metres. 80 minutes played. Another person who I think has gone really well in his last couple of games, uh, especially this one as well, only played 43 minutes, 18 hit-ups, 164 metres, and that was Luca Moretti. Uh, I really like Luca. Uh, he is one player that I would like to see get more first grade, uh, potentially off the bench again next year, and maybe even pushing for a starting spot next year. He's part of that young brigade who can really make a difference. So I uh, wish him all the best in the off season and look forward to seeing him in the Eels colours again next year. RCG, that man I just spoke about who potentially could be moving to the Dragons. 67 minutes, 17 runs, 169 metres. Joe Offahengawi, 56 minutes, 17 runs, 174 metres. But for me and probably a lot of other Parramatta Eels fans, the man of the match in terms of, or the player of the match in terms of a, a Parramatta side of things was Mike Acevo. Three tries, 10 runs, 153 metres, four line breaks, 
one try assist and five tackle breaks. And again, lately, just lately, I think we've seen Micah play a little bit better football as well from what he has had. He's probably had a season that he probably wouldn't have wanted to have. There's been injury. There's also been suspension as well, which started right at the start of the year with that Gold Coast Titans trial game. Uh, and then I think there was a sus- suspension from the game against Manly uh, as well. Uh, so, but in in actual fact, the last couple of weeks he's really stepped it up and he's been playing some okay footy. He made a terrible error last week against the Broncos with a kick. Uh, we just won't go back there. But this week, absolutely outstanding. Three tries, 153 metres. Uh, excuse me, uh, and was probably the Eels player of the match. Dylan Brown as well was also up there in the pecking order as to being the man of the ma- or player of the match and also uh, Gutho. Now, the thing for me with Gutho is I guess we just get to expect that every every week from him. So uh, these sort of numbers and these sort of try-saving tackles and... Um, the try scoring as well I guess we just sort of expect that from Gutho each week because that's the sort of a competitor he is in terms of the team stats it was a 52% possession to the Eels 48% to the Dragons 25 minutes for in possession for the Eels 23 and a half for the Dragons now the completion rates uh, 81 completion rate for Parramatta and they had 35 sets out of 43 so a very good completion rate there for the Eels that's what you want to win a game of NRL is you want to it to be up over that 80 percent definitely to be challenging to win the game for the Dragons 74 percent 29 out of 39 sets uh, missed tackles is the interesting one. Parramatta, 35 missed tackles. The Dragons, 27. Uh, but the errors was 13 to the Dragons, 8 to the Eels. And that, as I said before, was where it cost the Dragons in the first half, especially uh, and early on in that second half as well. But uh, the errors that they made, unfortunately, which got them out of the game. So... Look, moving forward to next week, I've already spoke about it. The Dragons, they play the Raiders at Cogra Oval. Uh, They will want to get the win in front of their home fans uh, and finish with 12 wins. And that will, as I said, look, it's not a successful season if you don't make the top eight, but it uh, will be a successful season, I guess, uh, from fans but it'll be a disappointing disappointing season from a fan's point of view as well knowing how close you could have been to making finals in this season in Shane Flanagan's first year so uh, look there's some good things to come next year and potentially challenging for a top eight spot now the big news I guess that everyone is talking about is Spoon Bowl that is on at Campbelltown Sports Ground, 6 p.m. on Friday night. And that will be the game that I guess everyone will be watching. Um, you do not want to lose that game. You do not want to win the wooden spoon. Uh, I don't actually know how you actually win it. Um, but uh, you don't actually want to get the wooden spoon, I should say. So, no doubt, this will be one of the most watched 6pm games out there. I think it will be a sellout out there at Campbelltown. Uh, and it will be the most watched game on Fox Hill, I think, this year. Just so much interest, I guess, from Tigers fans and Eels fans. Obviously, the Tigers got the win in that Easter Monday clash at Combank Stadium, 17 points to 16. I think it was an Aiden Caesar field goal that got them across the line. Lockie Galvin had a good game that day. He got sin bin in that game too, to be honest. So um, his first ever sin binning. But um, Aiden Caesar got the Tigers across the line that day in front of 28 
8,800. But this game's at Campbelltown. And uh, another interesting thing here is the uh, from memory, the, the Tigers have a pretty good record against Parramatta in, at Campbelltown. I remember... Oh, a few years ago, I think it might have been 20, oh, yeah, definitely a few years ago now. I think it might have been 2011 or 12 or 13 or 14, something like something like that. I can't I can't remember if Hindy was playing or not, but um, I think David Nafaluma carved us up. Um, it could be even be a, a two different games. Marika, Marika Corabetti, he was playing for the Tigers that night. He carved us up, um, and they put a big score on. But there'll be more of that in the game day preview coming up throughout the week, so stay tuned for that one. But uh, the Tigers, they had the bye last week, so they'll be nice and fresh and ready to go. They had a good win against the Sea Eagles the week before that, and the... Rabbitohs the week before that so they'll be trying to get the hat trick and avoid their third wooden spoon in a row but uh, more of that in the game day preview coming up later this week thank you very much for listening to this podcast the game day review of the Parramatta Eels versus St George Illawarra Dragons round 26 clash and please if you enjoy it Share it with your family and friends. Give the podcast a follow on Facebook and Instagram. I'd really, really appreciate that one. So, as I said, stay tuned for throughout the week. There'll be more coming up on the podcast, tipping podcast, game day preview podcast, as well as my NRLW review as well of the week that was. Thank you very much for listening and go para. Hello, Paracave podcast listeners. My name is Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty and long-term sponsor of the Paracave podcast. If you're looking to sell your property or buy or just curious to know what your property is worth in today's market, give me a call today on 0421 588 Listening to another episode of the Paracade Podcast. See you next time.